In this video, we are going to make a few UI updates because we, we don't really have an app or a project, but it will feel a lot more like an app and a project if we, we do just a few things. So we, we can take our, our playground and make it a lot easier to test and a lot more enjoyable to use. Namely, what we're going to do is we're going to change the, the colors of the buttons when they are clicked on. So just real quick, I click here, allow. I want this to turn green and these to turn blue. We'll look at this closer here in, in just a second, but that will make a big difference. If that's not interesting to you, you can of course skip to the next video. What you should know is that we're going to make a new file called changebuttons.js. We are going to bring that in uh, in index here. Come over to the class repo and in starter files gum playground, there is a file called change buttons and I want you to copy that and drop it into your change buttons files. Okay? This should position you well in terms of where to call it because this is actually what the main thing here is the, the change buttons function. That's going to get called in scripts and elsewhere, and you'll, you'll just have to look to see where we, we put it. Uh, for this particular video, it's going to be inside of each of these uh, functions, okay? And what is it going to do? Well, what, what I would like to have happen is on load, this button's blue and everything else is gray because you can't interact with them until you have shared your mic and your camera. Once I click on this, I want this to turn green to show that we've already shared it. And I want these four to turn blue because they are now active. Stop recording and play recording should remain gray because we can't, we can't use those until we've started a recording. Uh, actually, we can't play recording until we've stopped recording either. Share should turn blue as well. So that's one use case. If the user clicks on stop, all of these need to go back to gray, and this needs to turn back to blue because they can't, they can't do any of those anymore. So it's a little bit tricky to figure out how to implement this. The way that I have chosen is that when you click on a button, you will send over a, an array of colors. So you tell us what colors you want it to be. We will loop through those colors. They will map one for one with all of our buttons, and then we will, we will uh, update the, the color for each one accordingly. Okay? So... Let's walk through this quick and, and you will see. Naturally, if you want to implement it another way or if you've got a cooler way to do it, by all means, go ahead. Uh, but what I have done here is up at the top, these are the four classes uh, that we're using. I, th I think we're actually only using these three, but I included red just in case. Uh, we got BTN success is green, primary is blue, secondary is gray, and danger is red. That is bootstrap speak. And then line six through nine, this is an array of all of our buttons by ID. So over in index.html, we have share, show video, stop video, change size, and then these, these last three, these last four, I guess. Okay? So we've set up an array, and then we loop through that, buttons by ID dot map. So this is going to return an array. So, so button L's will be an array. We're going to push on it. We'll call the first one we're on ID. So the first time through, that will be share. Go and get the thing with the ID of share. So that'll be the actual DOM element, and that will be the first element in here repeat until we have this DOM element in slot zero, this one in slot one, and so on. Okay? So this is all of our elements. It makes it much faster than having to go and fetch them every single time and change buttons because they're generally not going to change. The actual function that we're calling, we grab colors array, which is going to be sent to us. We loop through it. We call the thing we're on color, and we need the index. And like I said, we're going to grab the first element that maps to the first color, go to the class list, and remove all four possible classes. There's more efficient ways to do this, but this is the simplest by far. Then we check to see what color was sent to us, and we add that color. You could reduce this logic down if you wanted to by passing BT and success instead of green. I think it's easier and better looking over in scripts to, to send the colors, so that's why I wrote it that way. So inside of get mic and camera, uh, let's do two things. Let's one, let's add an error here in our catch. The reason for that is because we are now doing more than just waiting on the stream. So before, the only reason you'd ever hit the catch was if this line failed. Well, now it could be that our change button function fails. So we'll want to protect ourselves from that. And what we're going to pass change buttons is an array, and the array will be the list of colors in order. So the first element needs to turn green. So I'm going to put green in here. The second element, third and fourth, are all blue. And, and the fifth, start recording as well. 
So we'll have blue, comma, and then I'm going to copy this. So this is 3, 4, and 5. The next two will remain gray because, again, you can't stop recording until you've started, and you can't play until you've stopped. And then lastly, share screen is going to be blue. So change buttons will get called. It will pass an array, and it will pass an array, and that this will map one for one with these over here. Share, which is in slot one, needs to be green. Show video needs to be blue. Stop video needs to be blue, and you get the idea. Okay? So this should be enough uh, that we'll either get an error on line 19, or we will get a nice color change. So refresh your browser. I click share. I click allow. There we go. This turned green. Now we're not actually disabling them. You can, you can go that extra step if you want to. But now I can click on show my video. And it comes through. And then I can click stop my video. So we need to update these. So let's grab change buttons here. Let's go into show my feed. It'll be at the very bottom here. This needs to remain green. The second one will go green. This one can remain blue. Uh, and actually, I made a mistake. We we don't want... Uh, so this first one it needs to be green, blue, blue. This, right, change screen size, start recording, and share screen. Those should not be blue <laughs> because the, the user can't... You can't start recording uh, or share your screen until you've actually loaded the feed. So these are both fine as blue, but this needs to be gray, this needs to be gray, and that needs to be gray. So down below now, this is more like it, where this is green, green, you can stop, you can change size, you can start recording, or you can share screen. <laughs> okay, so very uh, much better. You can pause me if you need to, and you can you can play with this as much as you want. There's nothing sacred about this. Again, it, it just makes it uh, a lot more friendly. For change, uh, for stop my feed, this needs to go back to being blue, and everything needs to be gray. So let's swap those over. Okay, so it's just these three right here where we've got this one up here, this one here, and this one here. That's all the functionality we have at the moment. Refreshing, start, allow, show. Okay, got another error in there, which this is helpful to, to knock out. Line 26, can't get tracks of null. What happened? Well. In here, I called stream.getTracks before the stream was loaded. Because you can see the media stream, my line 12 here, that did not show up until after the air, which means I clicked on show stream before the stream was finished. So what we will do is we can drop in here, if there's no stream, then alert stream still loading dot dot dot. And then we will return out of the function. Okay, we can put this in any time we know we need to have the stream. Copy it. Let's drop it down below in our stop button. So that'll be the first thing we do. Make sure that there's a stream before we, we proceed. Let's give it another try. So we start off blue. Allow. There we go. They turned blue. Show it. There we go. These turned green. Stop. That went back to the way. Okay, so good stuff. It's a real simple UI change, but it makes a really big difference, at least to me. Change buttons uh, should should pretty much do the trick for the rest of the app. The only the only reason we'd need to do anything differently is if we wanted to maybe add a, a color or we added some more buttons over here. Okay, great job. I will see you in the next video where we will tackle change screen size.